Hello there, welcome back to my channel. This is part two of my Tokyo vlog. Now, if you stuck around for part one, you know that we've already experienced Halloween in Japan. We've gone to Character Cafe, shopped in Harajuku, and did a bunch of eating. So, in this vlog, we're gonna go to a few luxury secondhand shops, and we're also gonna shop in Shibuya and go to a mini pig cafe. There is a lot of fun stuff we do, so let's begin. Day four was a relatively chill day for me just because I had been walking around and going on so many crazy adventures that I just needed a very chill day where I did nothing and I just ate. So my friends thought it'd be really great to try tea time at Hotel Gajo Inn, which is a upscale high-end hotel. We opted to get the three-tier tea option. It comes with little tiny scones and cakes and little finger sandwiches. And this is just us hanging out, enjoying our time. We also very um, embarrassingly started dancing in the middle of the rock path. And then I was like, okay, we gotta go, y'all. We just got to go. Afterwards, we wanted to grab dinner. They brought me to this place called Gyukatsu Motomura. It's a lightly breaded piece of katsu. And what is amazing about this is that there's these little pans that you use to sort of fry your katsu to the perfect consistency. And oh my gosh, the meat just melts in your mouth. It's so delicious and decadent and just really, really amazing. Worth the wait. And so we wanted to go walk around and try different types of desserts. So we got a cheese tart from Pablo. How colorful you guys are. Mm -hmm. How is it? How is it? It's good? Yeah. Then afterwards, we went to a donut spot. They had these amazing galaxy donuts that looked so pretty. My friend Maylene told me I had to try these grapes. These grapes are actually in prime season when I went and they're called Shine Muscat grapes. And holy crap, these grapes were the best grapes I've had in my life because they were actually so sweet and they had a very unique flavor to them. So after we finished eating the grapes, we went on another journey for this sort of watery mochi. We rode the train all the way to Kanasui Sweets for this mochi and okay, it looks so unattractive right now, but it was the most decadent thing I've had. It's very light, airy, and the kinako powder just made it the perfect light snack. I ended up eating the entire box. This is the day where we went shopping in Shibuya and we did a lot of luxury secondhand browsing. First, we're gonna eat breakfast. My friend brought me to this restaurant called Ishijima where they specialize in black vinegar rice. And she told us to get the chirashi, which we did, but you can get a chirashi or a nigiri lunch set. We lined up right when they opened at 11, but by the time we were seated, we noticed that the line was out the door. And this chirashi was so unique. I've never had chirashi where it's black vinegar rice before. One of the best chirashis I've had so far. Afterwards, we decided to try a different type of grape. As you saw from yesterday, we tried the Shine Muscat, and this is a different variety. Well, how can you tell, Maylene? Um, well, the wax coating, and then you look at the stem when it's still green. When it's kind of dried, it means like the inside is kind of fermented, mm. so it kind of smells like wine, which right. isn't that good. So this one's good. When no one's looking, you just kind of slightly feel it. Are you not you supposed know. to feel it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're here to get some bread. Maylene said that this is the best bread. Usually it's two hour line, but I think it's like Monday. Down or something. It's warm too. <laughs> we also went to Nishikawa Bread, and this is a specialized bread store. She told me that before I left Japan, I have to try this bread because it is phenomenal. So we brought the grapes and the bread back to an office building. I didn't even know that bread could have such a strong flavor. Look at this grape. 360 degrees. Look how big it is. Where does it even start? And here is me looking at the grape and comparing it to the size of my head and just me awkwardly posing with the grapes. Oh, and then you squeeze it in your mouth. And what's crazy about this grape is that you can actually just peel it just from pinching. Anyway, we ate the bread, we ate the grapes, and then it's time for us to say goodbye to our friend Maylene. And then we took the subway from Ginza to Shibuya. And we just wanted to go shopping in Shibuya. So the first place we stopped by is Bershka. Bershka is actually a European brand, but I really love how they localize all of the stores. And so the style is still very cute here. 
So Shibuya 109 is a very trendy mall. It's multiple floors and it's just packed with all of the most iconic brands. It's like an endless sea of shopping. We spent a good amount of time walking through every floor and every store. Fashion is just so crazy and I love the style. Like I loved all the plaid skirts and I love how they style everything. There's just so many cute little accessories as well. Whoa, look how cute all this stuff is. Whoa. I feel like the clothes in Japan is really my style. I love the platform shoes and everything is just so, so, so cute. So we spent a good amount of time browsing all of the floors. Yes, we went through every single floor in this mall. There's just so many cute things that you wouldn't really see outside of Japan. We got boba holder. Look at these, they're so cute. At the basement level, there is this candied strawberry that I've been wanting to try called Strawberry Fetish. They do this really interesting candied strawberry and it was so sweet and so perfect and just exactly what I wanted in that moment. So after we went to 109, we walked across the street to 109 Men's, which is the men's section. And then we browsed a few of the stores. Even the men's clothing, it's a lot more festive than the clothing that we have in the States, I feel. And a lot of really fun English as well. <laughs> Aaron ended up getting this hoodie and another jacket from the store. After we did some light shopping, we decided to head over to Harajuku where we had a reservation for a mini pig cafe. So this mini pig cafe is actually a new branch. It just opened in Harajuku and you need a reservation to go in. So walked on in and the first thing they ask is that you take your shoes off so you don't track any dirt inside of the facility. And then we got settled in, ordered our drink and then oh my gosh, the pig started happening. Aaron, it likes you. <laughs> and so the rule of this cafe is that you're not supposed to pick up the pig. You can pet the pigs as long as the pigs come onto you. So you can't pick them up, you can't really, you know, like move them around a lot. But if, you know, one decides that it really loves you and wants to sit on you, then you can allow it. And they give you blankets to put on your lap so they can sort of nap on you. And so when the time came, this spotted pig really, really liked me. Like probably liked me a little bit too much. And I just had so many feelings of like happiness. And yeah, this pig just didn't kind of didn't want to move and start burrowing its nose into my stomach. And you see this other brown pig. So yeah, that brown pig was being pushed off by this giant spotted pig because the spotted pig just wanted me all to themselves and tried to just shove this brown pig off my lap. And the pig started getting a little aggressive because pig really didn't want that brown pig in there. But yeah, I had so, so much fun. And yes, now that spotted pig is standing on the poor brown pig who is just doing nothing, just trying to take a nap. And I don't know, that spotted pig just had some issues. But yeah, eventually they both start napping together peacefully. And anyway, and so now Aaron is feeding the pigs. So we opted to get the pellets, which I highly recommend because you're not guaranteed that the pigs will come to you unless you got the pellets. And once you got the pellets, they all love you. Look, they're all here waiting for the food. When food gets involved, they get a little feisty. So I got kind of scared at some point and I was just like, oh gosh, I kind of don't know who to feed. So I started tossing the food everywhere because I, I, they're just getting so feisty because they want all the food in. And to be honest, these aren't miniature pigs. They're actually baby pigs. They're smaller than an actual pig. Like actual pigs are real big, but they don't stay this small forever. And you can actually adopt a pig, but they really do a thorough job screening because they don't want people to just adopt pigs and, you know, abandon them. So our reservation for the mini pig was about an hour and after we finished our reservation we headed outside where i started getting a teensy bit hungry so we stopped by this boba shop called tiger sugar i was just missing some milk tea because i haven't had it in a while so we decided to go get doner kebab on the street this is one of my favorite street foods in tokyo i just love how creamy the sauce is and i usually get it a teensy bit spicier than i did this time but it's still so good 
I love that when you get it, it's really hot and fresh and just so delicious. I actually don't mind eating on the street. And afterwards, we decided to head back over to Shinjuku where we did some secondhand shopping. So this is the ragtag inside of Shinjuku. There's also one in Harajuku, but we went to that one a few days ago. And ragtag is a luxury secondhand consignment store. You can get a lot of really great deals for reduced prices. And ragtag, I would say, is a little bit of a trendier shop. So they have definitely a lot of the cool brands that are in there. Like they got Yoji Yamamoto, we found a Rick Owens jacket there last time and it's super, super, super trendy. So the second store we went to is Comegio and Comegio is a upscale secondhand designer luxury store. They have multiple different floors and everything in here is in tip top condition and they have an extensive collection of all designer bags. A lot of the higher end pieces will be on the second or third floor and look at this wall to wall Louis Vuitton like that is just crazy. They're actually a very, very big nationwide secondhand seller. Everything is meticulously placed inside glass display cases and you have everything you got Gucci you got Saint Laurent so the third place I went to is Daikokuya there are multiple locations of Daikokuya I would say that Daikokuya also focuses on watches and luxury purses and the previous time I went to Japan I actually did buy a bag from Daikokuya they just have a very very extensive collection of all the bags you could ever truly think of Compared to Komeko, this feels like they just have a lot more variety. And because there's more variety, if you find a bag you like, if it's a popular bag, they might have multiples of them. So say you have two Chanel bags, they'll actually price it depending on the year and the condition of the bag. So after all of the shopping, we got really hungry and we went to a local chain called Saizaria. And Saizaria is a really affordable Japanese chain of Italian food. I really love it. I think the quality is amazing for what you're getting. And this pasta only only cost me like four dollars <laughs> So it is our last day in Japan and I am so sad to be leaving all of this behind. Honestly, I had so much fun. Last day. Because it's our last day, we decided that today would be dedicated to buying souvenirs and eating. But first off, we gotta get us some coffee. So we went into the JR station and found the super cute coffee shop. So inside every mall, there is the basement level and the basement level is usually the food section. I'm not talking about like crappy food. I'm talking about like this is is nice food like you got cakes you got deep fried foods you have a luxury grocery store it's just a very very nice experience and you also have sushi so if you don't have time to have a full-on sushi meal you can pick up some sushi down here the quality of all the food in the basement level is amazing so we walked around and I bought a few souvenirs and spices to bring back home afterwards looking at all the sushi made me want actual sushi so we went to a conveyor belt sushi bar in Tokyo, conveyor belt sushi is actually really good quality and really affordable. You also serve your own tea at these types of establishments, so they have a little jar of green tea powder and hot water right there at the bar. If you want to order something and it's not on the conveyor belt, you can actually ask the sushi chef and they will make it for you. After having sushi, we decided to go back to Takano Fruits Parfait. If you watch part one of this video, you know that this is my favorite fruit parfait bar. So this time I opted to get the muscat melon and strawberry one and Erin got a pear parfait. This is my absolute favorite fruit bar and I really suggest that if you have time to go to this fruit bar. I've said it so many times before, but this is just the best parfait experience you could ever have. And again, I suggest going to the basement level. So after all that eating, we decided to walk it off off or stand it off I guess by playing crane games I am actually so bad at these Aaron is really good but we spent a good amount of time trying the UFO catcher machines and we did not get anything we really wanted to get a cute plushie to bring home but I don't know luck was just not on our side that day so after we did not get anything from the machines we decided to play some Mario Kart instead um, and it was so much fun and right afterwards we decided that we should probably try Purikura one more time while we are in Japan and this machine is so crazy this is the first time I ever tried a Purikura machine like this where you can actually tilt the camera to whatever angle you want and position it as you want and Look at this. This is so awesome. When it prints out, it prints out semi-transparent. They're semi-transparent like film. Oh my, it's so cool. And of course, we decide to get sushi again for dinner because we don't know when is the next time that we're gonna have such amazing sushi. So this sushi joint is actually a very famous sushi place. You normally have to line up hours ahead of time. 
So the sushi chain is actually Hokkaido based, but they have a few Tokyo locations and the quality of this fish is just amazing. Like melt in your mouth amazing and it's super, super affordable too. As the night was ending, I decided that no Japan trip would be complete without one last run to the kombini. So we went to the kombini and I got almond jelly, a really cute peach drink. This is a peach too high. We also got some chips and I ate the strawberries that we bought earlier that day. Anyway, this is part two of my Tokyo vlog. Don't forget to check out the other parts of my trip. And if you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye!